If you have young children in your family, try this experiment. Ask them what the plural of the word dog is. They'll likely stare at you wide-eyed for a few seconds, not having any idea what you're talking about. Now, say this. Pretend I have one dog. If I get another one, I have two. The moment they catch on, I'll bet you anything that they'll smile and shout, dogs. So what happened there? Technically, the two questions had the same exact answer. How can a child so easily produce a plural noun when he or she has no idea what the heck a plural even means? Hi, my name is Luca from LucaLampero.com and you might be surprised, but the answer holds the key to the absolute best way you or anyone else can learn the grammar of a foreign language. The inability of a child to use grammatical plurals without even knowing what plural means is not an anomaly. Ask the child verbatim to conjugate a verb or identify the direct object of a sentence and they'll be equally at a loss even though they do both of these things hundreds of times a day. So again, we're compelled to ask, how can a child speak English or Italian or Polish or whatever language fluently without the knowledge of grammar terms? And even more annoyingly, if a child can speak a language natively without all of this complicated grammar study, then why do I, a functioning adult, struggle with a language after spending countless hours with my head in grammar books? The answers to these questions reveal the existence of two completely different forms of grammar learning, one which is highly effective and another one that is highly ineffective in most cases. The first form which children use is called implicit learning and the second which adults use and often suffer through is called explicit learning. To learn implicitly means learning through exposure and interaction, engaging in meaningful communication within a positive emotional environment. This is what children do and what they do constantly for years on end. To learn explicitly means learning through lots of direct instructions, uh, lectures, textbook readings, and convoluted written explanations. And this is what young adults and adults do in high school or college and beyond. Explicit learning is practically the exact opposite of implicit learning and the results show this, especially when learning skills like languages. Now, you might not be convinced. Implicit learning and explicit learning might sound like fancy technical terms used to describe what is essentially the same thing, learning. But no, trust me, the difference between implicit learning and explicit learning is huge and it's something scientists have directly observed for themselves in action. Back in 1953, a man known to science as H.M., not to be confused with clothing giant H&M, had much of his brain removed due to health issues. In particular, he lost his amygdala and hippocampus, along with a few other key brain components. As a result, H.M. had no memory of facts. He could eat breakfast and then forget it happened five minutes later. He could have had a whole conversation with someone and then soon forget they ever existed. Despite this, H.M. could remember some things, not facts, not events, but skills. One could teach him to navigate a maze or trace a pattern on a page while looking in a mirror, or, and he'd get better and faster at it every time. He would not remember ever learning that maze or tracing that pattern, and, but something in his brain retained the practice. He could still develop skills just as normal brain people could, though he would not consciously be able to recognize that he's performed those skills before. To put it succinctly, H.M. could learn implicitly but not explicitly. He had no mind for facts and events, but asked him to practice a task again and again and he could improve at it just like you and I would. The story of H.M. helped scientists learn that implicit and explicit learning are entirely different processes that occur in separate parts of the brain. As human beings, we lean on both at different points and sometimes together, but they still remain separate from one another. Okay, back to the present. I've shared with you the story of HM so you can start thinking about your brain in terms of implicit and explicit learning. How you use each defines your language learning results. So what does this imply for you and the way you learn grammar? First, let's briefly discuss the ways you can use implicit learning to more effectively learn the grammar of your own target language. One, massive exposure. You need to expose yourself to your target language as much as you can. The more exposure you get to texts, audio, and video, the better. 
Read and listen to as much authentic language as you can find. Two, comprehensible input. When you choose material for your massive exposure, start with things you can mostly understand. This seems obvious, but it is not. If you engage in content that you understand little and which has no other means of support, like a list of vocab at the end or translation or some grammar notes, then drop it. Three, meaningful interaction with human beings. Just as the early experiences of children are filled with countless interactions with parents and loved ones, you should try to fill your language learning with meaningful time spent with friends, tutors, and language partners. Nowadays, it's not too difficult to make new connections online, so even if you can't hang out in person, you have the option to connect on Skype or Zoom for that matter. Four, live as many experiences as possible. If you want to learn a language in a natural way, you need to live the language. This means that after you spent a while hitting the books, you should go out and try to use and experience the language in the real world. Travel, attend meetups, go hiking, go to the movies. Try to experience as much of life as you can, but through your target language. Five, get emotional. Emotions play a key role in the way we remember things, even grammar rules. Make sure that most of what you do in your target language consists of things that you find fun, interesting, and emotionally impactful. Now, let's take a look at what you can do when it comes to explicit learning. One, use grammar books, but only as a reference. Grammar books are not meant to be read cover to cover. Consult them rarely and only for quick clarification. Don't let yourself get bogged down by technical details. And if you can, take notes in your own words for increased memorization of finer details. Two, practice language awareness. Most people are not aware of how they speak, words they choose, the mistakes they make, and even their facial features or body language when speaking. Developing awareness of the grammar mistakes you make while you produce language is key if you want to improve. Three, get feedback. While you can figure out a lot for yourself through practice and occasional glances at a grammar book, our capacity to notice things has its limits. It is critical to consult native speakers for feedback on your mistakes, because there are even mistakes you don't know you're making. Four, implement the feedback. Receiving feedback is not enough. You need to implement it in order to improve. How many times have you received some correction and then continue to make the same mistake over and over and over again? That's because your will to hone your grammar was not strong enough. You need to constantly strive to avoid repeating the same mistakes. You'll fail at that often, sure, but the more you practice implementing feedback, the better you'll speak. A final important note. Some people think that you don't need to learn grammar at all. Throw the books away, stay away from any grammar explanation, just rely on comprehensible input. I don't believe this is the best way to go about things. I think that as an adult, you need a certain amount of explicit grammar explanations. An amount that depends primarily on the language distance between your native language and your target language. The closer two languages are, the more features they have in common. An Italian learning Spanish might learn the language without needing to crack open a grammar book simply because Spanish and Italian are so similar. An Italian learning Japanese, on the other hand, might need to spend considerably more time learning both implicitly and explicitly about how Japanese grammar works, considering the languages differ greatly in terms of syntax, uh, vocab, and morphology. And one more observation. The longer the distance between your mother tongue and the target language, the longer it will take you for you to assimilate those grammar patterns in a reliable way. No matter how smart and diligent you are, there will be many, many times when you'll forget a grammar pattern or two or ten. This is inevitable. Even if you read and reread your notes a dozen times. As a language learner, it is extremely important to understand that this is the moment in the marathon where you have to show great endurance to succeed. Otherwise, you can easily lose motivation. The reality is, as an adult, you need both implicit and explicit learning. You need to know the rules of the game and you need to practice and play the game. Both things mutually interact and reinforce each other. And come to think of it, the arc of your learning should follow that of a child as well. All educated native speakers have gone through a phase of implicit learning at home and then a phase of explicit learning at school. They first learn to speak the language and then they learn about the language in school. 
As a rule of thumb, try to divide your implicit and explicit learning time according to the Pareto principle. 80% of time should be spent learning implicitly, while the other 20% of your time should be spent learning explicitly. So, to wrap up, it's important to stress that human beings absorb language most effectively through a process called implicit learning. The opposite process, called explicit learning, is effective for memorizing facts and events, but less so for developing skills like language. As adults, we should strive to learn grammar mostly implicitly, but we should also use your explicit learning tools to help us bridge the gap when necessary. Focus on learning from raw, authentic language for the bulk of your learning, but then crack open a grammar book in those rare moments where you need a small push to help you understand a concept. If you'd like to learn more about implicit and explicit learning, be sure to check the description box for a link to my blog where I've shared a great article on the subject. As always, Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for lots more great content to come.